Welcome back to part two of Tech Talks on O-Rings. I'm Chris Formas, and thanks for joining us today. So one of the questions we receive quite a bit is how to service existing O-Ring overdentures, how to reline, how to make a new denture. And we're gonna cover both of those today. So if I'm making a new denture on an existing O-Ring attachment, the first thing I wanna figure out is if it is a mini implant that has the square hex underneath the ball, or if it's a traditional root form implant with the O-ring abutment on top. Why do I want to know the difference? Because I want to know if I can use an impression coping. If we put an impression coping on a traditional O-ring abutment, as we know, O-rings are omniplanar, they move laterally, they hinge and they move vertically. It's going to be almost impossible to pull any type of impression coping straight it's going to move. It's going to wobble. So if it's a traditional O-ring abutment on a root form implant, we're not going to use an impression coping. I'm going to impress the abutment itself. I'm going to take the appropriate analog, index that into the void created in the impression material, and then pour up my master cast. If it's a mini implant where you have that square hex underneath the retention area, we provide an impression coping that will engage that hex. It will stop any of the pivoting and moving and make the impression transfer very easy. You will pull the impression coping in the impression, snap one of the mini implant analogs into the impression coping, and pour up the master cast. This will provide your laboratory partner with exactly what they need to go forward with processing the new denture. So for our reline impression, we're not going to cut out the housings. We're not going to remove the O-rings. The bite is established. The vertical is established. We don't want to have to reestablish that information. So number one, let's lubricate the inside of the rubber O-rings with petroleum jelly. That will stop the impression material from sticking to it. Second, let's take an acrylic burr and scuff up the saddle area of the prosthesis. This provides mechanical retention for the impression material to adhere to. Third, when we're taking our wash or reline impression, we want to make sure, especially on a two implant overdenture, knowing how much O-rings move, we don't want the patient to flex their masseter muscles and compress the tissue in the posterior. If you compress the tissue in the posterior, the anterior can'ts and it takes the attachments out of alignment it's also going to give you an inaccurate reline impression. So let's put finger pressure over the attachments. Of course, have the patient come into occlusion, but again, we're not going to have the patient come into full occlusion and potentially compress impression material and or tissue in the posterior. Thank you for joining us today for Tech Talks by Preet, part two of the three-part series on the O-ring attachment system. Interested in learning more about the products you've seen here today? Visit us on the web at www.preet.com. Have a question you'd like to submit? Email us at techtalks at preet.com. That's T-E-C-H-T-A-L-K-S at preet.com.